we're gonna move to the to the last little little bit. Uh, this is gonna include a, a reading of a Chris Hedges article, so you know there's no hope in that. Uh, and, and there's a clip I want to a short short part of a clip I want to play as well. Um, so we talked about we actually brought this up, right? We we talked about how they targeted residential buildings and they're claiming that they gave them time to leave, right? Uh, well. Here, here's a here's a fun thing. What democracy have you ever heard of that blows up residential buildings, uh, uh, new journalistic uh, buildings, uh, hospitals, schools, agricultural uh, agricultural farms, public buildings? Remind me which democracy did this. Unless you're watching a fucking Zack Snyder movie, superheroes or like good guys don't fucking demolish cities. That's like not a thing good guys are known to do. And again, if you want to use the human shield argument, the simple thing to do is not murder the fucking human shields. How, how is that a justification? Yeah, we had to blow up it because they were using human shields. That just makes you sound like you want to murder human shields. <laughs> and then you're playing the argument of, well, who's worse? The person that uses the human shield or the person that has to kill the human shield? think about that how about both of you were fucking awful and there's no justification for either of your actions you fucking psychopath <laughs> remind remind me which good guys do that i'll wait i'm not gonna i'm not gonna wait forever because uh I, we don't have to have uh, this live stream would be like 18 years all right uh so so here here's the thing right all of the, the these are war crimes. What Israel is committing is war crimes, and uh, Chris Hedges does a very good job of of breaking that down. He does a really good job of breaking that down in in a Salon article. Honestly, I forgot to look at who the author of the article was, and I was reading this on Salon, and I was like, "This is a really fucking good article for Salon, you guys. Like, what the fuck? How is how is Salon writing such a great article?" And then I find out that it's Chris Hedges, and I was like, "Ah, that makes sense." <laughs> Now it's all coming together. Um, so this is a really good article that has a lot of history behind it. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm I'm just gonna kind of read the part of uh, this article that talks specifically about how they're breaking uh, the UN Security Council resolutions. So Israel is in breach of more than thirty U.S. Security Council resolutions. In it, it is in breach of Article 33 of the Fort Geneva Convention that de defines collective punishment of a civilian population as a war crime, which is exactly what Israel is doing to Palestinians. It's also pretty much what India is doing to Kashmir. So both of these people are committing war crimes. They're under illegal occupation, and they're punishing an entire collective group of people. Because again, they're claiming, well, Hamas is using human shields. So what are we supposed to do? We have to get Hamas. So we'll just blow up the people that have to, happen to be in the proximity of the people we consider to be terrorists. Even if Hamas was a terrorist organization, what would justify this? Fucking dick all. There is no just, you're, you're committing, a war, you're punishing people Right, like collectively punishing, that's a war crime. Article 33. It is in violation of Article 49 of the Fort Geneva Convention for settling uh, over half a million Jewish Israelis on occupied Palestinian land and for the ethnic cleansing of at least 750,000 Palestinians when the Israeli state was founded and another 300,000 after Gaza, East Jerusalem, and West Bank were occupied following the 1967 war, which Holly brought up. Uh, its annexation of e East Jerusalem and the Syrian Golan Heights violates the international law, as does its building of a security barrier in the West Bank that annex annexes Palestinian land into Israel. It is in violation of U.S. General Assembly Resolution 194, which states that Palestinian refugees wishing to return to their homes and live at peace with their neighbors should be permitted to do so at the earliest practicable date. I, I bet you the loophole to that last one is going to be early practicable date. That's that's what's going to loophole it out. Oh, you, well, well, they can't because Hamas. That the, I I guarantee you they'll fucking throw Hamas under the bus, uh, or they'll or they'll say, oh well, the Palestinians are too violent, so we don't know how to predict the date to to get these people back home. I know they're displaced. I know that it's so densely populated. 
um you know how do we how do we get come up with the date to get these people back home i bet you that's going to be the um the the fucking loophole back there uh da, 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 da. i want to share a different screen with you guys and make sure i'm on the right screen here okay so this is this is how journalists ask questions about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I just wanted to show you guys this because um, the media does not talk about uh, Palestinian struggles. They're not talking about what Palestinians have to go through. What they will focus on, again, the theme of the last 15 minutes, Hamas. That's all they fucking talk about, right? So they have this guy. And he's talking on behalf of Palestine. Um, and the media completely ignores the Israeli evictions. They completely ignore um, land rights for Palestinians. They ignore a lot of the shit. So they just kind of they just go, well, we have this narrative uh, that was fed to us. And anything outside that narrative, we don't know how to do. So we're just going to keep circling back around to this narrative that has been proven false over and over again and that's how propaganda works the more you repeat it even if there are people that counter it eventually people will start believing it because it's just been repeated so many fucking times which is why they also like whenever people like him come on they never get back on mainstream media because because they don't want that narrative to even be because if they bring him back he's going to solidify the 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 truth behind it so here i'm i'm, I'm not going to play the whole thing the whole thing is like six minutes long but I'll, I'll play a part of it just so you can hear how this lady reacts to him well we've been at this for a long time I hope you guys uh, this can is hear the sheer propaganda that we always hear emily this isn't about hamas this is about israel israel provokes israel commits every crime you can imagine israel injures more than 300 worshippers peaceful worshippers this morning in al aqsa mosque israel uh, uh, evicts people of their homes continues with its sheer violations of the very basic rights of people and then they try to blame the react rather than the act uh, uh, this must stop and we must really visit the root causes of all this and the root cause of all this is israel's insistence on the very denial of people's basic rights tonight as we speak emily people are demonstrating in palestine all over including uh, cities inside okay. the green light in 48 palestine in yaffa in haifa in nazareth why so she's starting to freak out a little bit because he's basically pointing out how uh, Palestinians, uh, uh, even um, you know, there are people within is Israel itself that are that are that are protesting what Israel is doing to Palestinians, right? Like so, so you can hear her starting to freak out just a little bit. Everything this guy said is is basically provable by fact. If you study history, if you understand what's going on in the region of that land, or even have a minute understanding of it. Um, or, or if you have a minute understanding of how fucking colonialism and imperialism works, you get what he's saying. And you also understand, like, what he's saying is absolutely true, right? And this is, so So here we go. This is how Do you think people are demonstrating? They're fed up. They're fed up of their rights being denied. They're fed up of being pushed away. They're fed up of their Let's homes being down, taken then, away. Sir. Let's break that down bit by bit if we can. Um, you see it very clearly. The Israelis think that Hamas are a radical terror group and that Palestinian officials use these holy times to incite violence. Was Hamas right to respond with rocket fire? This isn't about Hamas. Hamas was not involved. There were tens of they thousands. They were when they fired rockets. Hamas the see, see, she keeps going back to it. They were when they were firing rockets. Well, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Fucking Israel just bombed a fucking news building. AJ Plus and AP. They blew up a fucking a residential building. And you want to you want to bring up any of that? You're just going to keep going to Hamas, fired some rockets that were deflected by the group, by one of the best defense systems in the world? But that's the narrative. They keep recycling. And and he gets frustrated. I'm going to play just a little bit more of this so you can hear how frustrated he starts getting. did not decide to evict people from their homes inside the occupied city of Jerusalem. 
East Jerusalem is occupied not according to my law only, but according to your law, according to the UK position, according to the United Nations. An occupation has to be temporary and it has to respect the rules that govern occupation. Israel has made mockery of these uh, rules, particularly the issue of population transfers, ethnic cleansing, uh, 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 apartheid. I'm sure you have read the Human Rights Report. Those people have researched Israeli policies so over the last two years. Ask the exp experts, we not will. Netanyahu. We'll not Netanyahu is flaming of the settlements, but let's just try and understand this. Because Dory Gold, the former Israeli ambassador to the UN, has told us it was pre-planned by Hamas, the march had nothing to do again, with it, you wanted to make Israel look bad. Do you condemn... So again, it's it, do you condemn... The rocket attacks by Hamas? I condemn and I, I condemn Israeli aggression. I mourn for the 20 people who were murdered in Gaza only tonight. Nine of them are children. So again, they, they keep going back to the fact that this is Hamas. That's the whole argument. They have nothing else. This is, this is the last little point I want to make before we wrap things up here. If, if this region is being bombarded by the dangerous Hamas terrorists, right? Um, and it's so dangerous. It's, it's, it, you know, it's brutal and it's dangerous and, Oh my God! You know these Israelis are in fear. When is the next rocket attack gonna? Why are they still doing birthright trips? They're letting tourists into a country that is clearly being uh, terrorized by the dangers of Hamas. But you're doing tourism. What fucking war zone still has tourism? Isn't isn't that the justification? Israel's under threat but you're still allowing tourists to come through. You still need some kind of way to get your propaganda out there. To me, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the more they keep, you know, the more they keep that birthright program around and keep talking about how dangerous it is over there, like, it's just a big hip hypocritical red flag to me. The media is going to continue to do this. This is what we're going to see come out of our corporate media nonstop. Anybody that goes and counters what's going on and, and points out how uh, it, it, Israel is illegally occupying Palestine, and this is an apartheid state, and Palestinians have been living in an open-air prison, caged, shot, and killed, they're going to sit there and go, well, Hamas. Well, what about Israel, right? That's always – and, and they never want to answer that question. They never want to answer that question. The, and this guy does. The, the the gentleman that I brought up on the screen, he does. He does answer that question. Uh, let us go to your comments. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Holly says Hedges is great. And uh, Cynic agrees. A fountain of in-depth information and zero bullshit. Yes, I also uh, tell people that if you're looking for hope and answers, Chris Hedges is not the person you want to go through. Uh, Miguel says, throw Hamas under the bus. <laughs> it rhymes. Yeah, where's that hashtag? Lib shit libs? Come on. You guys missed a rhyming hashtag? <laughs> uh, Holly says, Blinken said he saw no evidence of Hamas in the uh, towers Israel demolished. Yeah. Again, I, I just want to point out, like, they're attacking journalists, and this is the same thing that's happening in Kashmir right now, is that journalists are censored, attacked, and jailed for speaking out against the Indian government. That is not what a fucking democracy does. I don't give a shit who you are. You can't justifiably say, yeah, a democracy is allowed to jail its journalists. No. That effectively makes you an authoritarian government. It effectively makes you fucking fascists. If you're attacking and destroying journalists and news buildings, you're not a democ. You can't claim to be a democracy. You just can't. You just fucking can't. It is ridiculous. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.